about other people. Um, all I do care about is that their minds are not clamped in, unable to receive knowledge, which they may not think about things they don't understand. But if only they try to understand, they don't have to accept. All they need to do is just widen their own horizons a little. Uh, the part yeah. that interests me, uh, well, all of it does, but one part particularly, uh, Ms. Leek, Sybil Leek, is that uh, you say that it's not a cop. That is, even though you believe in reincarnation, you speak of now, this time on Earth, this world, this yes. life, being a very rich and full one. To be mm -hmm. too. It's not a question of saying, oh, don't worry about now, there'll be pie in the sky. No, I don't believe in world. pie in the sky. I do not believe that any religion should offer bribery uh, in the intangible future at all. And this, again, is the changeover from witchcraft into the, the old religion, as we call it, into the new. At the time of witchcraft, there was an air of happiness, of being personally involved with living and not being ashamed about it. It was a time when uh, sex and love was talked about quite freely, because this was the life force, and there was nothing indecent about it. It was a matriarchal system. The woman was revered as never before, really. You know, Vestal Virgin didn't just mean somebody in a temple. A virgin in those days meant a woman who was sufficiently um, mentally well and adjusted to be able to choose her own husband at a time when other people didn't. And then suddenly we get a changeover with religion bringing the most terrifying concepts into it and always the personification of death there. So it's really a sort of, sort of uh, you're not too far removed from a man named Norman Noel Brown. No. This book, uh, no. You know, I think it's it's about repressiveness. Mm -hmm. The witch then is anti-repressive. Certainly. I think that in this life, we should still see there is a tremendous life force, a surge going on. Why not be part of it? Why not enjoy it? And with the new energy in the world, <coughs> you see something quite uh, rather interesting here. With the new form of energy in the world, yes. atomic energy, atomic energy. energy. And, uh, then sure, you, you, you're talking about a life energy that can match it to matches yes. never before. And this, as science uh, finds out these old, new forms of energy, so we, with our living energy, must know more about the energy we are generating because this is indestructible. This is we are as indestructible with our energy as the atomic power. So even though you may subscribe to uh, the theory of reincarnation, I may not, we both subscribe to that, that life itself on Earth. Yes, certainly. Pretty rich. And get up and each day, let it be a joyous, adventurous uh, one. And uh, the, you know, witches have a tremendous zest for living. I never realized this until the last five years, that everyone I know all over the world has this zest for living. And, you know, there's something about it. It does keep I, you I feeling know young. You have met Madeline Murray. You know? Oh, yes. And, yes. And she has her own... We were one day soon we'll have Madeline Murray on this program. Uh, when, and she's talking about the matter of zest for living. Yes, we and had a long neither discussion. Of you, rather, rather interesting. Neither of you is a traditional religionist. Not at all. interesting. Not at all. Being, on the contrary, yes. a, an atheist, mm -hmm. undoubtedly. And you are being a, a member of the religion known as witchcraft. She is not an atheist. She may think she is an atheist, no, but, but she... All right. Yes. No, no, I don't think it matters. No, no, I don't think it matters, but basically but, we have no... Yeah. We have talked about this far into the night. That I have a spiritual awareness, which yeah. she uh, will deny and then give a sentence yes. that we're both on the same uh, line. But what you both possess, obviously, is a zest for this yes. life here now on Earth. Which uh, is certainly. It is very Perhaps wrong to go. I was about to say Dame Sybil, it was Sybil Thorndike, uh, Dame Sybil Leek, uh, Sybil Leek, uh, our witch guest. The book, by the way, that seems to be a rather fascinating one indeed, an endearing one, at the same time has its own kind of approach, the Jack Daw and the Witch. Yes. True fable, it's Prentice Hall. Uh, how far it goes back, then we be thinking... Uh, the phrase witch doctor, uh, the phrase itself, we know that in China today, among old Chinese, there's new medicine, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, for old Chinese people, they still retain some of the herb, uh, oh, yes. some of the herb practitioners. And have you noticed how in modern medicine, so many people are suddenly discovering things like digitalis, which has always been known, fox love, for heart conditions. You know, it, it might be something they've just discovered. Ten years ago, I remember the newspapers had great headlines when a doctor uh, said that a woman had produced a child 
through hypnosis, he had, you know, Daniel watch in front of her. But witches have always known this. You know, a piece of shining metal was all that was ever used in the New Forest with the gypsies. And no woman died in childbirth. And no woman suffered or, I mean, obviously suffered something at the time of birth, but no woman had terrible complications. And no woman took nine months of being uh, pampered and petted and feeling ill while she was having a baby. Birth was a wonderful thing. And again, even this morning, you will forgive me if I say this, but I'm still laughing about it because I can't believe that this is the 20th century. I was on a very, uh, television show this morning and suddenly somebody has discovered that babies can be breastfed. They what? Babies can be breastfed. Uh-huh. Someone discovered that. Somebody baby. has discovered this <laughs> and they're advocating it. You know, this is a. Amer- am I in America in the 20th yeah, that century? Milk may actually, have come from a cow. And there's a society, you know, to uh, to say that this is something that um, that should be done. I didn't know that that this wasn't so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're living in an interesting time. Oh, I find it fascinating. <laughs> you know, I'm so busy exploring the other world and discovering this world. But life can't be dull for me. <laughs> well, perhaps before you, you leave, uh, Sybil, I hope this is the first of a number of visits. I'd like to ask you a great many more questions about witches and this life and this time particularly. What's the message you hear? What do you hear? To, what, what have you heard from elsewhere? How will we fare? Oh, well, Mankind. I think that man has to discover that he does indeed have a spiritual evolution as well as a material one. Because it's not enough to have, you know, two refrigerators, three cars. There has to be something else for man. And if he, he himself can keep pace with the discoveries of science, then he's got something on. Because he too has got to increase, he's got to be better, he's got to be able to cope with the wonders that man and science are producing. And he can only do this by extending his mind, by developing that nine-tenths of the mind, which he doesn't even use at the moment, according to Harvard researches. You know Buckminster Fuller? Does that name ring a bell to you? Buckminster Fuller? No. Buckminster Fuller is a, a, a designer. Uh, he designed the geodesic dome. Mm-hmm. He's an engineer and all. He, he uh, speaks of this very much. Really? They have hardly touched mm-hmm. uh, human potentialities. No, we have not. I know might, this. We might come back to you after all. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when you're coming back to original forms of feeding baby, any babies, anything can happen. Instead of coming back to original <laughs> sin, it might come back to your original creativity, which may be more to the point. Yes, I, I really believe this, that man has to stretch out and keep pace with the creations of some of the wiser ones, understand them a little more, be able to use them so that there is an advantage in having these crea- this creative art, art in, I mean, in the broad sense, in all forms. By the way, in t- talking of witches, you spoke of the Western world pretty much. Are there witches in the Orient, too? Most well, no certainly, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there yes. is no... Even in Russia. <laughs> there, there, is no, there is no witches international, is there? Well, it is international, yeah. because they're all over the world. But are you and I... Perhaps the last question before we speak of the book once more. Are you... Uh, is there a, uh, a sort of a United Nations of witches? There isn't any. It always has been, because there's always been this grapevine, a secret society which it's has flourished. Grapevine, yes. Always has been. I hope uh, one day soon we talk some more, because I think this theme of religion and its origins, that is, organized religion and witches, might be a very fascinating I think so. Stuff. I think so, indeed. Sibylik, our guest. Sibylik, comma, witch. And the book is The Jackdaw and the Witch of True Fable, and it's Prentice Hall, the publishers. Thank you very much, and uh, one day we'll, we'll have another talk about I hope so. what is happening out there. Yes, in both worlds. In both worlds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.